Hi all. Hello. Let's give it a couple of minutes. Can someone else joins? Please add your name to the meeting notes um, and any agenda items that you'd like to talk about. Right, let's make a start. Um, I have got a hard stop at um, half past the hour today, I'm afraid. So feel free to continue the conversation if I need to drop, but otherwise we'll try and finish by then. Okay, so looking down the agenda, so holiday period for some of us, um, no meetings on the 26th or the 2nd. So the next meeting will be on January the 9th, 2023. Um, so yeah, the Cloud Native Telco Days um, event in Amsterdam. Looks like there needs to be sponsorship in order for that to go ahead, if I've understood correctly. Um, and so, um, we're trying to gather sponsorship interest for that. Um, and Lucy is coordinating that. Um, so thank you, Lucy, for doing that. Anyone who's got sponsorship leads, please let her know by close play tomorrow. Is that the deadline from the CNCF, Lucina? Good morning. Um, so unfortunately, the deadline from CNCF is through the holidays. And um, I'm happy to submit the proposal form on my last day before the holidays will be Wednesday. Gotcha. Of this week. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks for doing that. Um, so upcoming events, anything else to add to this other than what's been mentioned before? So we've got MWC, Barcelona, Connected America, Private 5G in the Edge Summit, um, KubeCon, possibly Telco Day, Telcos and Public Cloud Summit, ah, Telecom TV thing, okay, interesting. Um, OSS North America, Big 5G event, Open Run Summit, Anything else that we should add there to make people aware of events and so on? Yeah. 
there's a um, cloud native security con on the first week of February that CFPs are already closed and decided, but people may be interested in um, increasing their security posture in Kubernetes. Uh, and there'll be a lot of good topics for people to watch there. Okay, thank you. Is there any specifics about what the CNCF for the uh, this working group is going to do at MCW uh, at Barcelona MWC? Um, so this is this is more kind of events that might be of interest to the group. Um, okay. I think where 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 we've got something specific happening, um, we'd call that out in more detail. Okay. Um, so for example, there was a talk. Um, about the CNF certification program, I think at ONE Summit in the autumn, and that was listed on here as something that was happening, etc. Doing something at at uh, Mobile World Congress is not entirely out of the question, but uh, a lot of that energy disappeared when COVID hit. Uh, there was supposed to be a, a Linux Foundation event uh, the, the first year that it was canceled, so there is possibility that i mean definitely not this this coming year but there's possibility that something could eventually happen again but it would require some concerted effort for people to kick start it up again and um probably collaborate with the uh, Linux foundation networking to to have it make sense as well uh, and i don't know if those connections are uh are happening at, at this point yeah understood there was a there was a a demo of Project Silver, or what is now known as Project Silver, at last year's MWC, which doesn't really fit in either CNCF or LFN. It's kind of separate at the moment, um, but that could be a potential link for the future. Okay. Let's have a look at the PRs then. Bingo. That's good in a way. Um, I wouldn't expect any to be open today or before January. So I think it's going to be quite quiet. Yeah, there had been some work the last couple of weeks on the issues and PRs. So. Um, yeah, there's been quite a few closed recently, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So, we've had, yeah, three merged in the last week, four in the last two weeks, which is good. So there's quite a few issues open. Um, I think let's ignore the bottom two for now because they've been open for a long, long time and discussions ongoing. Um, for the rest, um, I can't remember, did we close all the issues, Taylor, that were linked to PRs that had been done last week i think we did well we were trying to but there could be some that are still open these don't look like the things we worked on last week anyway to me All so right. there's a bunch of there's a bunch of issues um i'm afraid i haven't progressed this one which i've been assigned to for a little while um, but these top six are not assigned to anyone at the moment. So if anyone's willing to um, get involved and help um, push some of these forward, that'd be great. Um, some of them were created while we were working through um, and someone mentioned something. Uh, I think like that link one that you were referencing was similar when it was created, but the well, new ones were created based on um, the feedback 
I th the most important thing I think for us going into next year is getting, if we're going to get more um, best practices into that Google Doc, I'm sorry, not the Google Doc, the Markdown Doc for best practices for CNF developers. We need to get, go through and actually um, get the content. And the selection that we have those issues, those top ones, that was based on feedback, um, you know, that we've been having, I guess, all year, because we have all the least privileged documentation and content. Um, and then we have other pieces that we had gone through yeah. that are related to the certification and everything. So those would be the ones where I'd love to get help from uh, the rest of the community, try to complete these. Yeah, I remember now actually this this was an example of where it's something that's tested in the test suite. And there is there is some rationale provided in the test suite documentation, but it's not necessarily linked to a best practice document. Um, and so it's trying to fill those gaps. Okay, has anyone got any comments, concerns, questions about the issues on the screen or offers to be assigned? I can't see who's on the call, so I don't know whether there's loads of people or not. Okay. If someone has ideas about something they'd like to work on that we don't have listed, please speak up and we can get them in place. Yeah, that'd be great. And then currently there's no other agenda items. Is there anything not yet listed that people would like to raise today? I think um, so, Taylor. We were talking about sort of trying to have a, a regular cadence of updates to the documents in terms of you know, new best practices created or improvements to the docs. I wonder if we should track. I suppose that's been done in the issues. Just trying to work out how we can make it easier for people to sort of go. This is the sort of thing that's missing. Um, that they can that they can work on. But sure. Can you, bring up the, can you bring up the CNF um, developer best practice document? Um, possibly. Which one's that? I think the, it's under the docs directory. Robbie, Robbie had originally created that one. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. This one. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right. And that should be now linked from the front readme. So okay, cool. this should be a place where folks can come to and, you know, eventually see here are the list of best practices within the categories that they can find and then, you know, click and go into each best practice, I, I think is where we were headed and um, should make it easier for people that are looking to adopt or understand what's out there. Yeah. Um, the, as far as getting, like communicating, what are we trying to do? We want to, we want to get a list of published best practices and then how can people help um, any practices that we could put in the categories would be the high level. 
and then um, we could tag potentially tag issues with add a, a tag on on issues that are indicating that we want help. Um, I don't know if it's you can there's stuff like best first issue or, or good first issue not best good first issue and other there's other things on github that are common to indicate here's a place to get started but we could look at something like that and then the other thing we could think about would be um the github milestones if we want to do something like publish a certain number of best practices in this document within a time frame like Q, Q1, end of Q1 have some number of best practices. And if, um, if we add those, if we do a milestone, you can add issues into the milestone. We could actually add the ones that are, um, that we have right now, if, if we mm. thought those were good and then go, okay, here's a set. And then someone could, you, you could go in and go, here's the current milestone that we're trying to do with the due date. Um, so this is Q4. Um, last year. Last year. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah last... I, th I think, I think using the, using the labels and milestones would be good. It's, it's there in the tool already. It just gives us a good way of viewing mm -hmm. what, you know, what we could be doing in the next three months. Yeah. Okay. So that's. I, one I mean, it, does anyone else have any thoughts on how how to make it easier to get folks involved? I mean, I, we have a lot of expertise out there, and in, including folks on this call, but um, right now, for your colleagues that might be willing to contribute and have experience in some area. It doesn't have to be the best practices that we list, but everyone's solving problems, you know, in your day work and the idea is to share those practices that we've found as we overcome stuff so that, you know, we go, this is a good idea. We should do this sort of thing. Does anyone else have any ideas or input on making it easier to contribute or making it visible where you could contribute or step in? It's tricky. I've, I've found in the past just asking people in internal to Vodafone that if unless the request is kind of clear and concise and well packaged, it, it doesn't really get done gets deprioritized yeah. um so it needs that kind of it needs that initial bit of effort to define it quite well in order from you know then i then i can go and talk to the expert of that thing you know whatever, whatever it might be and you know that's probably something they've already got content or could produce content quite quickly for but i don't think people yet are feeling able or willing probably the former um just because of resource pressures to spend the time doing that initial discovery and definition work um which is i know not really a solution but kind of thinking out loud about how we might address it yeah i kind of I, I agree with what tom just said is that I think defining kind of the goal of that milestone of what we're, what we would be asking for people to con contribute, clearly def defining that I think is going to help get people involved because I think that way, like Tom just said, we can go back to people on our team and, and say, okay, you know, in Q1, we want to fill in these sections uh, and our and and I think we can go back and and allocate the resources internally to be able to help 
support that. But without that clear definition, it's if it's kind of open ended, it's tougher because other people, you know, everybody have their day jobs kind of situation. All right. Um, thanks for the feedback. I have an idea on making things a little bit more defined. Uh, before that, though, let's finish what you're doing, Tom, and put at least a, this can be like a draft or whatever milestone if we want, but in the title, I would say um, 2023 Q1 best practices, make it, um, yeah, you can put space after, yeah. And, and then, yeah, we can say, I mean, I. it seems like a, a low goal would be three best practices, <laughs> ideally, in Q1. If, we, if we're only doing one a quarter, then it's going to take forever to have yeah. that document at some, some level that's useful. But if we could get three in the first quarter, which is harder with the holidays and getting started, then maybe we get enough momentum to get some more in the next few quarters. Yeah, well, we've got to set some a goal of something, haven't we? And then yeah. see where we get to. Yep. So um, go ahead and I guess just save that and then go to one of the tickets that is a best practice proposal. All right. And then if you look at this, it's probably um, just based on what you're saying, it may be uh, and uh, Rich and, and you both, Tom, it seems like this might be too vague unless you're already doing this one's about configuration, declarative configuration. And if you're already working on that, then it may jump out to, yeah, this is a good idea and I can help. Otherwise, it might not be as apparent. Um, one thing that we could do to help people along would be to take different sections of what a best practice is and leave the, like put it in the issue and have it um I, I guess blank but say here's this here's the parts that we need we need someone to write a summary go, go ahead and go to one of the best practices it's probably an easier way to talk all right so we need a summary for the best practice and the motivation and goals and whatever. So if we have something, it's kind of, I guess, a template. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way to, uh, unless you're a, have the correct edit or the high edit access, to a repo, then you can't go edit comments. So I'm trying to think of how you could do this. I don't think no, if not everyone is going to be able to go add to the description, but ideally this would be like a form. And as you fill it out, then people are going to see, okay, this is done, this is done, this is done. But mm -hmm. what could happen is if we have, maybe we add that into the description area. And then um, potentially those, those uh, headers for each section and then say, this, this section needs to be filled out. And then as someone adds a comment, um, here's a summary or whatever, then we could keep updating the description. I don't know, something to that effect so that we have, here's an area Here's the best practice proposal that we need help on, and we need, you know, something in these areas, and then uh, go from there. We can also do it as, you know, it could be a Google Doc that's linked 
and we fill it in that way, that would be the other, another option. Yeah, or we could use the wiki, or um, I think are you describing something within the issue. So I click on, you know, new issue. Um, you know, if, if it's a new best practice, and then in here, there's the sections that you were talking about, and, and yeah. people can start to add to them. If you're not already familiar with the other best practices or the process, then you may not. So we could think yeah, we about could, we could we, we could create an issue template quite easily, which just use has those sections as the contents of what becomes the initial comment in the issue. Yeah, that sounds good. And thanks for the link, um, Lucina. So. Um, oh. Great minds, because I've seen that used in other in other sort of similar things where um, where you then get a fairly consistent issue first comment, which is helpful. Right, and then anything else could be left blank. Uh, and I would say if it might be good. Um, I mean, anyone opening these and trying to contribute, you know, if you have your own workflow and stuff, happy to have whatever you're going to contribute. Um, but to help with folks who don't know where to get started, then mm. doing the template and then, so it, Tom, you created this one and then what, maybe if, if, if you create a Google Doc or a Hack MD or something that's yep. we can keep modifying and has version history. I mean, Google Doc, you can do, you could create a Google Doc and then turn on comments from anybody, not editable, yep. but comments for anybody. And then, um, you know, of course, give edit to whoever you think is safe. But if we're going to drop a link in here, then you can drop a link to the Google Doc. Uh -huh. And people can just start adding. And then we just roll that back in. That can also be done with a hack MD. But either either way lets people see the template. They let them see some of the content that you've already said, you know, here's some ideas. Maybe you do the summary or you know, whatever you feel whatever parts that you're ready for whenever yeah. it's created. Yeah, makes sense. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for that top one. Um, I do need to drop now. So I've got to manage the meeting with my manager. But um, yeah, I will do that for the issue that we had open there, 244, um, and see how that works for people. Sounds good. Hopefully that helps Rich um, with folks to get started. Yep. And thank you all so much. Um, Thanks. Sorry for, sorry for cutting short. No, no worries. Um, talk See to you later. Um, Bye. Yeah. So I saw in chat, uh, Victor, did you get a response um, to the open networking? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just curious because uh, looks like they're quite uh, telecom focused. So I just wonder what's the relationship between the, this effort and uh, that foundation? Yeah, so there's several different orgs out there that are, you know, working on networking related cloud computing, I guess I could say, and um, in different ways. So we've been trying to reach out and really over the, the last several years as when CNCF created the telecom initiatives originally trying to reach out and collaborate with different folks. Um, I think Frederick, you've been engaged some with the open networking directly in the past. Yeah, that was, that was uh, quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, I've not been as engaged in, in any of the communities as, as much recently, but yes, there were, there were engagements. Yeah. So it's been off and on and um, Frederick is, is part of uh, 
a CNCS sandbox project called Network Service Mesh and as well as other work that he's in. And we've had some folks from the ONF join like the telecom user group and different things over the years, but it's all, I'd say the organizations keep, you know, moving around, it's fluid. If, if you have anything specific where you think this is of mutual interest, like there's overlap or complementary work, Victor, then please let us know. Um, yeah, to, to, help with, to help with the ONF relationship itself. So if I recall properly, that's primarily operator, uh, operator led, but there is also heavy vendor involvement. Um, it was part of the reason I'm not, I was not as involved as much in Allen was that at the time I was in neither an operator nor a vendor. So it was, um, the rules of engagement made it very difficult for me to contribute myself. But uh, that being said, that they do rely upon several of our, uh, or us as in the, uh, the CNCF and Linux Foundation technology. So for example, uh, things like uh, Kubernetes have heavy usage in it. You have things like uh, uh, Tungsten Fabric uh, that's, that is, uh, that's sold into it through, and through at least one major vendor. Uh, then there's also, uh, projects like uh, Magma and, and similar, which uh, I, it would not surprise me if those ended up in, in those particular areas. Plus the broad ecosystem that Kubernetes itself brings into, uh, brings into, the, uh, into the space. So uh, definitely, so even if there is not a direct, like this group talks to that group, there's still some form of collaboration that occurs between the different organizations, even though the collaboration may be more, uh, may be more indirect. I think that OMEC projects utilizes um, quite a few open source projects itself. So there's, and including like DPDK would be a one point that's you see tied across many foundations, but <clears throat> as a layer. But did you have anything specific, Victor? Um, no, I just uh, I used to work for telecom. Now I actually want my friend is uh, is uh, um, volunteering in most this the uh, um, ONF and uh, the CIS benchmark the, the uh, community. So that's why the the the, the question that was uh, posted earlier about like security best practice sounds like that's something I will I go go back and talk to him and see whether that how that uh, overlap in uh, what they're trying to do in the ONF world. Yeah, um, would love to share and collaborate on best practices and yeah. try to, if, yeah. if, especially anything that if it's agreed on in multiple communities, then it seems like something that we should be putting forward for adoption. And a lot of what CNCF does, it would be upstream first layer um, usage for best practices and technology that then other projects build on. So that's encouraged. So I, I think there's definitely places where we can collaborate. Uh, he also the, he, he is part of that. Um, he, he been contributing to the CIS benchmark. Uh, uh, what is called? Uh, um, what is called? Um, uh, CIS. I don't know what is CIS. Uh, community. Uh, oh, um, community driven. Uh, at least uh, the, the center for internet security. So that's that's what uh, the, the the security. Like the, the one that talked about earlier, it seems to be typically the most accomplished that organization. But they come here. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you and see whether it's any uh, overlapping interest. Sounds great. Does anyone have anything else?
So in terms of CIS, um, my understanding is that there is a CIS benchmark for Kubernetes and very likely, uh, it, it would surprise me if we were not involved with it in the uh, CNCF uh, tag security group. Um, and there's also a SIG uh, security in the Kubernetes project itself. Um, if you're interested on security side, uh, I would definitely recommend having a conversation with, uh, at the very minimum, the the uh, tag security as as well as this particular group. And I think there was some initial discussion and interest between this group and tag security in trying to find places where they could collaborate with each other. So if uh, if that's an area of, of interest to you, it's it's not an, it's not really an issue of, of there being having to build interest. It's more an issue of uh, of resources and, and people to uh, to take it on who uh, who want to make that commitment. So if that's something you're you're interested in trying to find, uh, we definitely could use the help there. Thanks. Um, actually, talking about SIG and TAG, uh, I, I'm like new to the still. So I know TAG is usually on the, the foundation level, SIG is more on the project level. So when it comes to security, is it TAG or SIG? Uh, I see that there, there's a TAG, I'm, I'm not sure there's a SIG okay. for security. Both both exist. Uh, uh, the, the TAG is bound to the uh, CNCF itself. Uh, the SIG security is bound to the Kubernetes project itself. So the scopes are, are very different. So SIG security itself uh, will generally only look at, uh, Kubernetes SIG security will only look at things that are related towards Kubernetes itself. And uh, the CNCF cloud, the cloud native efforts, uh, ex if let's say that you were to remove Kubernetes from the picture entirely, uh, there are still very large spaces that uh, the CNCF still uh, touches upon and has projects that that uh, uh, that it's involved with that would still be within uh, would still have wide scope. So, uh, so in short, there's there's definitely there's definitely overlap between the two, but the scope is is set very differently. Okay. There's, you have people that are in lead, that have been leading and and long time in in SIG security that are also in tag security. Tag security is going to ensure that the greater CNCF and I'll say cloud native ecosystem is covered. So looking at individual projects looking at workloads, ex extending Kubernetes core and those sort of things versus the more focused efforts of Kubernetes um, SIG security. So for ONF, I, I think it just depends on who you know, what the focus is since ONF itself has a lot of different projects. Um, it would depend on where their focus is. If, if you're looking at specific APIs and, and things around the core of Kubernetes, then SIG security might be the place to talk. But if you're looking at the workloads and greater, I would say even like greater networking issues than tag security is a good place. But I think if you join, if someone joins CNCF tag security and starts going to those meetings, you're going to have references to SIG security. I've seen that in the past. And then once things make it up to like the CNCF TOC, then you'll have even more overlap because they're they're looking at the effects of what are the big changes in Kubernetes as a project and how does that affect the whole ecosystem. So 
it won't hurt to get involved in either place or both. Yeah, just trying to figure out what each uh, meeting is about. <laughs> it's going to take a long time, probably. Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, join them and or look at, you can look at the past um, meeting and the meeting agenda. So they're published for the SIGs and TAGs and working groups. Um, they're notes, meeting and notes and that sort of thing are all public, including a lot of the, a lot of them are recorded. So you can even go and, and look at published uh, recordings that are, they're published to YouTube. Yeah, yeah thanks. I gave a link to it, but <clears throat> I'll just call it out. Tag security has a white paper. And I, I don't know if SIG Security's actually put out anything uh, as far as a white paper. There is the Kubernetes documentation with, where you'll have direct security best practices in the primary like Kubernetes project docs, but this, Tag security, um, I clicked the wrong one. The, the white paper is, would be one area where you can go and look and they've just, um, they did an update to the paper. So this has a lot of good content that you can go and see if this sort of thing overlaps. All right, um, anything else? All right, our next meeting is gonna be January 9th, 2023. Wish everyone uh, happy holidays and we'll see you next year. Happy holidays.